A second Air Force One. Air Force One is one of the most famous planes in the world, but few know that the President travels with a second identical aircraft that serves both as a decoy plane and a backup, should the primary plane be unable to fly due to mechanical failure or attack. The Boeing 747, known by call sign Air Force One when it carries the U.S. President, is arguably the most important aircraft in the Western world. The specially configured aircraft has served six presidents and acted as a mobile Oval Office in times of both peace and crisis. However, as a way to guarantee the president's security, there is a second identical aircraft used in case of emergencies or as a decoy, keeping potential threats and onlookers from knowing the politician's actual location. The second aircraft is just as equipped and effective as the main one, and both planes have the exact same specifications and features. The modified Boeing 747s can reach a top speed of 600 miles per hour and are capable of speed launches to avoid surface-to-air missiles. Although their defense capabilities are classified, it's believed that they can repel missiles and jam enemy radars to avoid detection. The two planes are fitted with extensive state-of-the-art electronics, such as 85 onboard telephones, multiple sets of two-way radios, 19 televisions, and a secured air-to-ground communications line. Ready for any kind of crisis, they even have an emergency operating table with plenty of reserves of the president's blood type on board. When the president travels, the decoy usually lands at a public airport. Onlookers gather around the plane and watch it as it arrives and departs from the runway. Meanwhile, the original Air Force One usually lands in military base hangars with its shades drawn and all lights turned off as a security measure. Thus, the president's location remains a secret. E-4B Nightwatch An extensive presidential fleet is always ready to intervene in case of impending nuclear destruction. Four altered Boeing 747s, known as E-4B Nightwatch planes, serve as the National Airborne Operations Center. They are considered the best, if not the only, chance for the U.S. president to survive a nuclear attack. These four-engine, swept-wing, long-range, high-altitude airplanes have been in operation since the 1970s, when there was a constant nuclear threat from the Soviet Union. Unlike the luxurious and ceremonial Air Force One, the E-4B Doomsday planes have far fewer perks. They're intrinsically designed to be flying war rooms in case of an attack. An E-4B plane is divided into six different functional areas, a conference room, a briefing room, an operations team work area, dormitories, and a National Command Authority's workspace. These planes have room for up to 114 people, all staff members consisting of military strategists, analysts, and communication aides, trained to guard the president through the first week of a nuclear war. The night watches also have unique gear designed just for them, such as a five-mile-long antenna that trails the aircraft, allowing contact with a nuclear submarine fleet should ground communication stations be compromised or destroyed by the enemy. During the final decades of the Cold War, when nuclear tensions were at an all-time high, an E-4B Nightwatch plane always stood on alert at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. It only needed a 15-minute warning. Today, one of the four known doomsday planes, jokingly referred to as Air Force One when it counts by the air crews, regularly travels either with or near the President, particularly on overseas journeys. During Obama's administration, a doomsday night watch plane could be spotted every Christmas season near a small airport on a small island in Hawaii while the family vacationed in Honolulu. An entire airport wing would be closed for the duration of their visit. These days, when the president is in the United States, a night watch aircraft remains on high alert at Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, with its engines turned on at all times. C-20Cs The Gulfstream jets, known as C-20Cs, shadow the president's travels and are painted in an indistinguishable shade of white. Among the existing presidential fleet, these aircraft are so secret that not even the Air Force acknowledges their existence. The Gulfstream jets never land in the same airport as Air Force One, but one of them is always nearby, standing ready to evacuate the president and guard the National Command authorities who can launch a nuclear counterstrike in case of an emergency. 
The Air Force's official website does not show these jets, and one of the only references to the Gulf Streams is on the government's official master list of aircraft designations. This list only offers incomplete information on the Gulf Stream jet model, and it's described only as a, quote, modified C-20B with enhanced secure communications, used to support senior-level personnel and to provide backup for Air Force One. This Gulf Stream jet fleet was first delivered to the Air Force in 1985 under President Ronald Reagan and his administration's massive investment in government operations. Like the E-4B Nightwatch aircraft, the Gulf Stream jets are purposefully left antiquated, with dial and gauge cockpits, rather than modern LED computer displays, to protect the plane from electromagnetic pulses emitted by nuclear explosions. However, the gear aboard the jets is state-of-the-art, with special satellite communications networks and a classified defensive measures protocol set to protect the plane during an attack. On a routine mission, the presidential party never sees the C-20 aircraft. Nevertheless, presidents have no choice but to travel aboard the Gulf Stream jet in a unique high-risk situation. In 2000, President Clinton anonymously boarded an unmarked C-20 aircraft on a flight to Pakistan, while another Gulf Stream jet followed a few miles behind as a decoy, using the call sign Air Force One. Hundred Sixth Rescue Wing. In late 2016, a New York City resident spotted a military aircraft circling the skies, prompting a flurry of speculation on social media about what the aircraft was doing. But local aircraft connoisseurs quickly identified the C-130 as part of the 106th Rescue Wing fleet and its call sign identifier, King-22. According to social media posts, the C-130 Hercules aircraft circled around Midtown for about an hour at a height of 3,000 feet. At least two H-860 Black Hawk helicopters were also spotted in the area. Notify NYC, a citywide alert system that notifies New Yorkers about aircraft flying in restricted airspace over the city, did not alert the residents about the three aircraft that day. But aircraft experts recognized the primary aircraft as part of the 106th Rescue Wing, which is based out of the Francis S. Grabeski Air National Guard Base, just 65 miles east of Manhattan. The 106th Rescue Wing would be the first asset on the scene in case of an emergency or disaster in New York. When Donald Trump won the presidential election, he and his family posed a monumental security risk as he and his family lived and worked in the heart of Midtown Manhattan. It is believed the Secret Service activated special plans and conducted secret exercises to prepare in case of a challenging urban extraction in the future. When asked for comment, the Secret Service refused to confirm or deny the exact nature of the classified aerial operations. Even the vice commander of the Air National Guard's 106th Rescue Wing, Colonel Nicholas Broccoli, denied the allegations, stating that the aircraft flying over New York City were only conducting standard military training. White House Drone Fleet Washington, D.C. has a series of strict reinforced rules to prevent drones from flying over some of the country's most valued zones. But that didn't stop a consumer-grade drone from accidentally crashing onto the White House lawn in early 2015. The incident inspired the Secret Service to get a fleet of its own. After the unexpected disturbance, the organization began conducting covert tests during nightfall to determine how to best deal with potential unmanned weaponized drones. These nightly tests had to be conducted in no-fly zones, and the Secret Service coordinated the experimental efforts with other agencies. A vague statement issued by the organization made no mention of their testing drones' capabilities. Several reports suggest that the secret drones were being tested for electronic countermeasures and signal jamming technology. In 2019, the White House sent a letter to the House Committee on Financial Services and the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, notifying the board that the Pentagon would continue to work with small drones and that their fleet of unmanned aerial vehicles was, quote, essential to the national defense. As the secret drone fleet continued to expand, President Trump issued an executive order during his final days in office directing federal agencies to abstain from procuring drones manufactured by adversarial nations, including China, Russia, and Iran. The executive order, which President Trump signed on January 18, 2021, read, quote, It is the policy of the United States, therefore, to prevent the use of taxpayer dollars to procure UAS that present unacceptable risks and are manufactured by or contain software or critical electronic components from foreign adversaries, 
and to encourage the use of domestically produced unmanned aerial vehicles. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and hit the bell icon to get notified about our newest content. And also comment below on your thoughts about the aircraft used to protect the US president.